reflecting on the musicality of machine learning based music generators in real time jazz improvisation, a case study of OMAX, Improtech, and Digital Jazz. For short, I use the term OID. OID is being developed at Ilkham in France. In this work, we analyze improvisations produced by the OID system through a musically orientated evaluation methodology using the elements of music. The analysis is presented from a jazz performer's point of view, reflecting upon cognitive foundations of emotion and meaning. The focus of this work is on the responsiveness of the OID audio capture and generation engines in regards to the elements of music in real-time performances. A short introduction of OMAX Improtech and Digital Jazz. OID is a co-improvisation technology which allows humans and machines to co-improvise real-time music side by side. It can learn from on-the-fly live recordings or a corpus of pre-selected musical material. New improvisations can be generated by recombining this musical material. To do so, it uses factor oracles. To support our thesis, we use the concepts of music expectations and emotions. Musical emotions derive from the arousal, suspension and fulfillment of expectations. Tension and release are suggested to be key factors in providing momentum and defining structure in music. Expectations arise through implicit schematic and dynamic knowledge of musical regularities acquired through repeated exposure to a particular style. Listeners' arousal and attention are intentionally manipulated by composers and improvisers through modulation of predictability and schematic violations. Composers and improvisers are able to emotionally, emotionally design experiences through preparation and control. Having control over a situation is a vital aspect of musical expectations theory. Let's now see the musicality of the OID computer music system in regards to the elements of music. Rhythm, groove, timing and beat. Manual tapping is the way OID handles the beat. However, we believe that this method is prone to distractions. Precision between tap times and true beat times can be problematic depending on the tasks the human operator executes during performance. Fluidity is important, however, OID plays the segments with no real-time listening capabilities, hence not able to play tightly within an ensemble. Consequently, this lack of real-time rhythm awareness affects the groove i.e. OID is not able to feel the swing or play a laid back or ahead of the beat groove. Let's now watch uh, digital jazz in action where manual tapping is used during an improvisation session. It's an excerpt from, um, from a video uploaded at digital jazz website. It's called Catch Pie Save the Earth. Timing and beat. Beat accentuation and syncopation are style-defining features in jazz performance and composition. For example, in a 4-4 time signature, norm for most of the jazz repertoire, beats 2 and 4 are important not only in regards to velocity but for chord and scale tone placements. In this figure, figure 1, we see chord tone placement on beats 1 and 3. The opposite is also possible. This is a very usual jazz melodic uh, line building. Uh, a very short analysis here on beat 1, we can see the third of A minor 7th is a chord tone. Here is another chord tone, the third of D7, the chord tone of G major 7th, and chord tone of G major 7th again. Having control over this placement can reaffirm the form of a tune or provide a rhythmic counterpoint to the form. Beat and time signature. When compound or odd meters come into play, several problems arise uh, with OID. 
First, the division of the meter usually is laid out in a specific way, for example, 3 plus 2 plus 2 for a 7, 8 odd meter. In such cases, the accents of several elements of music, for example, melody, rhythm, harmony, timbre, dynamics, fall into specific places within the meter. On this figure, figure 2, we can see an example of an odd meter with accents on beats 1, 4, and 6. Silence. OID does not introduce pauses in its musical output by default. However, this can be balanced out by the fact that the OID is a co-creative agent, reserving this aspect of musicality for the human's co-improvisers, interacting with it. Nevertheless, considering empty future vectors as valid states for building the indexed graph conditioned on certain constraints may be an interesting addition. Harmony. OID uses what is called uh, scenarios. This can be a chord progression annotated by the user, which will become the navigation leader of the factor oracle. Constraining the performance around the static chord progression, we believe that raises several issues. For example, credibility is important when sourcing chord progressions, as real books, automatic chord estimation and human transcriptions can vary significantly. During a jazz performance, these chord progressions are improvised by altering or completely replacing one or several of the original chords with others. Combing, a term we use uh, when we play chords to accompany uh, soloists, follows voice leading conventions. OID is able to improvise the accompaniment, however it's not able to apply voice leading rules to the accompaniment tracks it generates. On figure 3 we see voice leading conventions of chords as seen in jazz, where every tone is moving smoothly to the next by either maintaining the same note or by stepward movement. For example, the chord on E moves stepward uh, movement down to D, uh, the ninth of C major seventh, etc. Melody. Most jazz musicians improvise by playing a series of notes within a harmonic framework. The improvisation techniques listed below are some popular processes that strongly address the tension release concept, which is associated associated with universal music making methods. For example, targeting thirds through sevenths and vice versa. The melody moves over the bar line in a stepwise manner from the 7th of the current chord this is A flat, the 7th of B flat minor to the 3rd of the following, this is G, the 3rd of E flat 7th stepward movement over the bar line this is an example taken from a solo of Charlie Parker uh, on Donna Lee Resolution colors, resolutions by step or a fifth over the bar line are common in jazz. Other melodic moves provide weaker resolutions, signaling the arrival of the next chord in a less definitive manner. Here we can see that the melody line moves smooth, smoothly over the bar line with a stepward movement downwards and then upwards. This is an example by John Coltrane on Lazy Bird. Contour emphasizing horizontal melodic constructions that can carry listeners over the bar line towards longer range goals. Here we see an example by Michael Brecker as he played the solo on Softly as in a Morning Sunrise. Starting from A, down here, building gradually, moving up, creating an ascending contour, reaching E, up here, and then gradually start going down. The aforementioned uh, melodic techniques are not addressed by the OID system. OID labels the plate material, as we can see here, according to the harmonic grid and re-injects this material in a random manner. This re-injection of captured classified material in a random places in random places within the meter, a process defined by either the scenario as seen in Improtech and Digital Jazz or the descriptors as seen in OMAX chosen by the user does not lead to jazz lines governed by conventions. Consequently, OID lacks harmonic dissipation in terms of melodic leading to the next chord and beat accentuation. 
dynamics, OID does not consider the amplitude of the recombined audio slices. Listening sessions carried out as part of this work revealed that the OID generation algorithm produced dynamically unbalanced melodic phrases, characterized by random, extreme, and sudden dynamic changes. We will listen now to an excerpt of our own experiments with OMAX. Listen for the sudden dynamic changes happening. Finally, structure and form. The capabilities of the OID system in storytelling, or in other words, its long-term structures of improvisation, are limited. This is evident in some early experiments with Improtech as well as in recent experimental work. OID lacks understanding of the global form of the chord chart. It just takes the chords one after the other, and what it does may work with the chords, but it doesn't always make sense. It could be interesting to examine how the notion of attention and concepts such as that of jazz mapping could be adapted towards effective storytelling of real-time machine learning improvisation systems. Uh, we will see, we will watch a video of early experiments that show that with medium continuity the system produces unstructured phrases. Uh, on the following video, one can hear that the system plays exact phrases of the recorded material has been fed by the uh, musician uh, providing the training material and when it tries to recombine the ma this material, there's no structure, harmonic sense and melodic leading to the next chord. There's an expert taken from the Ar uh, Improtech archive found on Vimeo by uploaded by Jerome Mika, one of the developers of uh, OID. Finally, discussion and conclusions. On this work it was argued that the performance of the OID system within the scope of the jazz musical idiom sets along disputable measures of musicality. Emotional designation in jazz composition and improvisation is achieved both through preparation and control and instinctively through schematic violations of music regularities acquired through the repeated exposure to a particular style. Schematic violations, as seen in OID, do not provide a balance between expectations and surprise. Stylistically, the OID sounds just like, however, scenarios and descriptors used to constrain the generation algorithm cannot guarantee jazz lines governed by idiomatic conventions such as rhythm and beat placement, over the bar line movement, contour, structure, and conventional voice leading in chord progressions. We believe that by articulating what uh, the generation engines of OID do and what do not, in music terms, helps musicians to better understand its capability and uh, hopefully to know what to do when they play with it, they co-improvise with it. At this point, we would like to uh, thank the developers of OID, namely Gerard Asayag, Jerome Mika and Marc Similier, for the induction of OMAX uh, and DC2 library into LabMAD of National Kabodistrian University of Athens, as well as for their valuable, valuable feedback for this work. Thank you. Maybe the first question uh, is, do you think some of this is a little bit of the uncanny valley 
phenom effect in the sense that uh, you know in computer graphics when when the the character animated character becomes too close to look like human we actually don't we, we repel it so i mean is this a sign that you know we you know if the system was totally non jazzy maybe that would have been musically easier to relate than something that tries to be a jazz musician but fails <laughs> that's kind of a general question do you think I mean, um, you know, the things that you pointed out, do you think that this is because of the, your sensibility as, as a jazz musician, you actually start, um, and I had a discussion about this with, uh, you know, one of my colleagues in, in UCSD, a psychology professor, and he said, well, you know, when computer tries to be too good, we turn on our ugliness detectors, <laughs> in a sense that, you know, we detect everything that does wrong. If we know he's doing it wrong, that's fine. <laughs> so it's almost that kind of a embodiment of, of, of the computer that starts coming too close to us. So that's kind of my, my question. Do you think some of this is the effect? Maybe, maybe you know, the system is trying something that it's not supposed to do. It is does, it? yes. I hope, anyway, I hope my connection <laughs> is really bad, but I, I hope you can, you can hear me well. And uh, no, no, it's, I hope it's going to be a very interesting conversation, this one. Um, it all started when I first uh, had uh, my first contact with OMAX, anyway, and it was Jerome, actually, who came to Capodistrian University in Athens. And Jerome is the, the next speaker, anyway. And, um, you know, I had the, an interest to see how this thing works, yeah, and what it produces. And by reading through... OMAX manual, for example, or um, DC2 library manual, or Improtech and Digital Jazz later on. Um, I've seen from the developers that they were trying to say that uh, it plays in, on any idiom, yeah? Whether this is jazz, uh, they refer to Indian raga, uh, even to rock and baroque music. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll have a listen to the output and see. And I was looking through and what I found, it was, yes, it's not able to produce uh, exactly what a human would play, but uh, that, that wasn't my expectation anyway. Yeah? I, I know I'm dealing with a machine and I need to be clear about what the machine can do. And anyway, through my research, I had, um, I wrote, I read an article of 2008, I think it was by Asian Kond, Arsia Kond, if I pronounce his name right, one of the early developers of, um, of uh, OMAX, I think it was, where he was talking about uh, formal, not formal, structural music, and he referred to musical expe expectations as said by Leonard Mayer and uh, David Huron, and okay, so I said, okay, they're, they're, they're trying at this point to say that it's going to play like a human, yeah? Which is, it, it intrigued me to look into what it produces. Therefore, I, I sat down and, uh, and did this work. But yeah, I have no expectations of a machine playing like a human being. That's, that's very clear. And I'm supporter of, we need to define the uh, intentions and expectations from what the machines can do. But another interesting thing is that since, since either OMAX or Improtech or Digital Jazz take um, training material from a live musician and it tries to recombine uh, this material, it's classified and it tries to recombine this. Then when I see music line having no, no sense of direction, like for example, an ascending or descending contour or having no harmonic resolutions mm -hmm. happening and it just changes, uh, it, it, it takes the material that was fed by the musician and it places it uh, on the chord changes. But, but jazz is over the bar line music, it's not on the chord change. Sorry, um, if I took too long to answer your question, but yeah, I hope you get something of it. Definitely. Uh, so maybe before I, uh, I turn to Odette's question, uh, 
um, just just as a maybe possible continuation to this line of thought. Uh, you know, initially I think it was popular really for free jazz, where where yeah. you don't when you don't have structures, right, or where yeah. we're not set, set scenarios, and then it's sort of like intentionally you, you don't keep the beat right you could you know, if, if, if you look at books about free improvisation you're almost intentionally supposed to do the errors that that uh, don't work with jazz you know you don't keep the beat structure you don't keep harmonic structure <laughs> yeah so maybe sorry if you uh, mm -hmm. yeah so, so the sorry to, to interrupt again i'm gonna i'm just yeah. Give me one second, please. I'm going to have to turn my camera off because I had uh, the sound was cut and I didn't hear the question. If you can please repeat the. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so, so my question is uh, or, um, you know, initially, I think the system was popular uh, with free jazz, where a lot of the errors that um, you, you analyzed in some sense uh, are almost intentionally free jazz. I mean, you're not supposed to play to the beat. You're not supposed to create harmonic structures. Um, and um, so my question is maybe, uh, you know, jazz actually to be able to perform jazz or classical or you know, humanly well-established style uh, is, is at this point uh, beyond the capacities of, of uh, you know, improvisation systems. Yeah, if I understand your question, yeah, uh, from what I've seen, yes, OMAX was uh, intended to experimental, not necessarily for it as from what I know anyway, uh, experimental music. And this is what I did also. I'm, uh, I have uh, submitted one of the works. It's going to be presented at this conference, at, uh, the fourth concert anyway, where I use OMAX for such... Uh, for, for this, anyway, for ex, ex, an experimental work, I'm playing uh, spectral music and I improvise with OMAX side by side. But yeah, when uh, scenarios uh, come into place and uh, they're very strict on the chords, and then, you know, as a jazz musician, I, was, I expect uh, from anyone to... To do uh, to satisfy my schematic knowledge about what what jazz is supposed to be, do it in a very different way. But you know this uh, these conventions that don't apply only to jazz melodies. They, they are conventions that come uh, through through the centuries. Like uh, at, the, at the point of chord change, you, you move smoothly by uh, tone or something else. But anyway, I, I was expecting uh, something different to happen, maybe with very small weight, uh, as information technologists uh, name it, may the, the system may be able to provide um, a machine aesthetically melody lines. Mm. Very, very interesting. At least I, I find this fascinating. I mean, it gives me some ideas of you know the challenges, right? You, you add knowledge and, and, and adding knowledge and adding structure it creates uh, totally new challenges, right? Because you see the, the difficulties. Um, so that is asking, yeah. Um, that uh, is asking, would you say that the digital jazz is more kind of a cheap jazz for the masses while the experts notice all the problems? Uh, and I'm worried that the question is loaded. I wouldn't say that anything is cheap. No, no way. Uh, I'm not getting into that game of judging a machine. It's a machine. And, uh, but hopefully all this uh, effort, it's at the very beginning. And being able to, to, to do what these people have done so far, it's by itself, it's, it's amazing. However, that's why I sat down because I did find the whole project amazing. That's why I took the time and say, okay, through this work, they may find something interesting to, you know, look at this and it's written down, it's been articulated. It may help musicians like myself know better what the system does and of course lead to something different. It doesn't have to play like, like me or, but play something like it, it needs to find its own identity and 
or it may have found it already, but uh, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we still have some time for discussion. Um, uh, unless. Hmm. Um, I, I, I get the signal that we are running over time. Um, I mean, I, I would be happy to share, like you know, my my experience of working with colleagues with uh, Omax. And actually, the criticism I got, and that was more in the in the free jazz uh, setting, uh, was less the convention. It was the problem that, uh, as you said, um, and I'll be blunt because I think I can be critical of <laughs> sort of my own work. Uh, or work that I'm involved with was uh, that it's parroting, you know, that the whole recopying the, the OMAC structure and the fact that actually, I mean, it, it, in some sense, it is, it is an attention model, right? It looks back and, and it looks, uh, it doesn't look forward so much, but it looks back. Uh, or if it's pre recorded, it also looks forward. Uh, but it, it, it's actually, you know, uh, it's indexing a database and it's actually recopying the data. I mean, it's not even generating. It's, 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 it's attention without the generative model. It, it really just goes to the database and grabs the sample. Um, and, and the problem is that if, if the musician provides the database on the fly, it's actually co copying him in, in a very naive way. So it's true that now with uh, uh, other developments, right, uh, with Improtect and uh, Somax, uh, you can actually use another database. So uh, it doesn't have to recopy the, the musician. But the criticism I got was that it's parroting instead of supporting in, in, or opposing, and it doesn't create a dialogue. You know, it was not so much about the musicality, it was about having that, that agency that we heard before. I mean, it's, mm. it's not an agent. I mean, yeah. it, it's an effect, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, this, yeah, it's an effect. <laughs> okay. I think. Yeah, so that was kind of my self-criticism, but I was kind of wondering if, if and what do you think about this in your experience? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My experience, well, uh, yeah, I, I started looking on the philosophical side of, uh, of things regarding uh, these systems, and since you you mentioned agency, yes, there's no obviously there's no agency carried, or is it? I don't know. Is is it carrying the agency of the player that is copying uh, uh, real time, uh, or is it not? Uh, I'm I'm confused uh, myself on this one. Uh, is it just mimicking, or is it's creating something new. Uh, yeah, uh, it would be very interesting to look on, on the creativity of these systems in maybe in a later work. Um, but uh, the, the idea I got was that um, it produced uh, a kind of inconsistent blend of uh, both a linear narrative and non-linear narrative. It's doing its own thing, but it's copying the player as well. And the overall uh, result was what, what I write, if, if you read my paper, is that um, it produces an inconsistent blend of postmodern and modern approaches in music. Um, yeah, it, it, it also will be interesting to see to see this kind of systems from a performance studies point of view, what is able to, to, to offer in terms of, you know, creating identity or healing people or these kind of things that uh, music offers to, to audiences. Um, great. That's it for me. Yeah, we, we, have, we have a moment actually, uh, I don't know how technically this can be done, but uh, I think mm -hmm. Joel uh, wanted uh, to ask you. Yes. Exactly. So if, uh, if this is going through, because I think, yeah, maybe the voice, right? Uh, yeah, can you hear me maybe? Is it okay? I can hear you, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I wanted to, to, to say that I, um, I, I agree with your with your study, and let's say that now that we pursued this uh, we pursued this work, 
uh, we see this history about research and quantum improvisation, like, you know, with OMAX, uh, the focus was on how to model a musical memory and then uh, introducing scenarios and structure. Um, it was a way to say, okay, how could we introduce some formal structures uh, in this navigation through a musical memory? Um, and when we take the example of, you know, jazz or baroque music or, or, or other repertoire, it's smart to say, oh, these could be uh, fantastic playgrounds since they offer some kind of formal structures. Um, mm. and, um, and so let's experiment with chord progressions, with uh, uh, bass, uh, written bass and stuff like that. And regarding agency, this is, uh, so we are advancing step by step. Uh, this is uh, what we try to do now uh, with the other uh, research that I will uh, show now, even if it's now not exactly uh, the focus now, but it's precisely to, uh, to find a way to, to be, um, to have, you know, a set of uh, strategies from free to planned, uh, going through reactive approaches and uh, yeah, and using above, uh, as uh, uh, Shlomo said, other kind of memories that the, that the one that is recorded from the musician to be able to explore something else that this, you know, this clone or this repetition. Uh, Sorry, yes, thanks very much, Jerome. Nice to see you again. And I just realized that, yes, I was talking to Shlom Dubnov, uh, which I have read many things about your work and your contribution to the OMAX. Yes, uh, thank you very much. That's my, uh, I'm happy about that. And Jerome, I got all this part about the um, uh, contribution to, no, no, sorry, cooperation with several, you said about businesses, about the, uh, kind of structural, about music structures and stuff, but was there a question at the end, sorry, that I didn't get? Sorry. No, no, it was, um, I, I was just, um, um, you know, underlying the fact that um, I, I agreed when you said that um, we do, with these structures, uh, we did not try to be able to play um, perfect yeah, yeah. Uh, baroque improvisation or jazz improvisation but that there were yeah perfect playgrounds since they offered both this situation of interaction and this formal structure that we could implement as scenarios yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i agree yes yeah um to a point i i i use omax at my uh, at my work now i find it so so interesting that i um, you know, we we um, we're planning to perform with Omax and Somax. Now, I uh, wish I could use Improtech, but I have tried my best. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't make it work. Um, uh, but um, yeah, it's it's amazing, and I've seen what Somax can do now by harmonizing different melodies, and we're well into it. And uh, yes, I don't mean to be a very uh, a negatively criticize any any of your work. It's uh, of course it's amazing, and you can see that um, I'm I'm very interested in what it does. I just took the you know just wanted to clear up the things most for myself mostly for myself. I've learned through I've learned many things through this uh, this process anyway. And how I didn't have uh, a clue about machine learning and how things work. And yeah, thanks very much for letting me into that. And thanks very much. I don't know who was the third reviewer has helped a lot uh, about uh, refining uh, the paper, the final version of the paper. Anyway, I don't know how we're doing with time. I think I think we, we, we had some extra time. So we, we had the opportunity to get into discussion. There is one more question and think then we'll move <coughs> uh, Sebastian uh, and if, if it's a question or ob observation uh, writes from a musical cyber perspective the system certainly has agency even if it just parroted musical phrases uh, so um, yeah I don't know um, again this is this is observation I think more than a question but 
I think the question of agency is, is yeah. very important and uh, it's yeah absolutely agree it's vital and this is where it's interesting because it does mimic what the player has played before and it kind of carries this uh, cultural background if if you say like in an afrological improvisation as George Lewis has said it. Uh, but yeah, then uh, we lose some of this identity when the machine tries, but has the machine have an identity or what are our expectations anyway and the, our intentions? Okay. Thank you very much for, uh, for this interesting conversation. If you're... Okay, and, and this is like a great uh, transition to our uh, next speaker.